question I would ask you is this is your first priority for those funds? With the refunds? Yes. Yeah, we get a lot of bang for our buck being able to tap resources, uh, okay. specifically with the city of Vancouver, uh, using their grind machine. Uh, we did it on Washougal River Road. I think Janice also put me back on that opportunity last year while they already had it mobilized out. Sure. Uh, also, micro seal, fairly new technology uh, that we utilized on 32nd Street. Um, so, yeah, it's a great opportunity to be able to do a lot of it in house prep wise and then be able to uh, farm it out and go to bid for the actual asphalt or micro seal application. How's that micro seal holding up, by the way? It's holding up fairly well. Um, like with any treatment, it's about the base prep as far as crack sealing and cleaning up the bad spots, actually over excavating if you've got soft spots below the surface. So we had good prep on 32nd Street. It's what we're looking at for East Street currently. Uh, it's considerably uh, cheaper than a two inch or two and a half uh, hot mix overlay. So it's uh, fairly durable. It's in between a, a chip seal and a asphalt hot mix aggregate mix, so. So I think what I hear you saying is that experiment you did last fall, I guess, uh, was cost effective. Yeah, it was. It, and it's not only cheap, but it works. It does, and it really depends on what type of traffic the specific arterial is gonna hold. Obviously, East Street gets quite a few of, uh, you know, heavier rigs being a major arterial, as well as 32nd Street going to city limits, uh, which that really takes a toll on a facility. There the you overweight, go. yeah, oversized vehicles. Nice going for taking the initiative to try that experiment. Looks like it worked out for us. Yeah, it has to this point. Yep. Other questions? Mm -hmm. Moving along. Water line improvements. Yeah, when we initially um, went through the process, or I guess we initiated the workshops and stakeholder meetings along the E Street corridor with the first uh, conceptual drawing for E Street. At that time, staff was recommending replacing the water utilities within E Street. And uh, through the process, um, to this point, we've backed out and done uh, everything that's, I guess, mission critical to this point, uh, just doing cluster cut-ins at intersections to be able to isolate leaks on the E Street corridor from River Road to 32nd Street. Um, I've had a few conversations with Bruce Whittle with USDA, um, Rural Development. Um, they still do have a 40 year, currently it's 3.25%. That can slide a quarter of a percent up or down depending on how quick it's submitted. Um, and we have utilized USDA for the zone four improvements at the McGuire property. Um, when we started the uh, down the path of meeting with the stakeholders, we were designing to replace all the water lines. We have incurred some design costs from Wallace to be able to um, design those utilities within the corridor. Um, at the point, late 2009, uh, we backed the utilities out and just went with the cluster upgrades and the intersections and redoing the intersection of River Road and E Street. Uh, after further review and looking at the climate that we're in, the bid climate specifically, mobilization and demobilization of a contractor when we get to that point, and price of materials uh, with ductile iron coming down, which is what I would recommend uh, along this corridor. Uh, my projections are if we do move forward with considering replacing all the water line, which is World War II surplus invasion pipe, uh, depends on what part of the country you're in, uh, how they define it. It's past its service life by 10 to 15 years easily. Um, the last thing I want to do is do a 26 block improvement and then start excavating potentially for water leaks and failures along the corridor after I put a fresh micro seal down. So there's a, a price tag that's uh, associated with that. Um, the estimate at this point is 1.2 to 1.5 million dollars to replace all the utilities from River Road to 32nd Street. Um, my estimate, piggybacking it within the current design for E Street, already having done some design with the cluster upgrades at the intersections and the initial design work when we started E Street, uh, close to a 20% savings, 250 to 300,000 saved, putting this out to bid with the E Street project. Um, 
I have spoken to FCS Group. They offered up the water sewer rate analysis late 2009. Um, talked to RJ a little bit as far as debt service, what type of impact uh, this would have on the rates, specifically in the water utility. Uh, if you recall, um, as we looked at that five-year planning horizon for rate structure, uh, the sewer side, the wastewater side, um, has a higher need and escalated rate implementations. We didn't do the uh, built-in escalator, but rather revisiting it year by year. So the water utility uh, initially was in better shape. Not to say that a 1.2 to $1.5 million investment is not significant, but rolled into the debt service and the projected rates over the next four years is, is fairly low impact. Um, so I wanted to bring this before you for consideration. Um, it's my recommendation as your public works director to, while the iron's hot, strike and replace those utilities and incorporate it into the E Street Road Diet project. Question. I guess I would just say that regardless of uh, the whole E Street project, if you set that aside, this is something we're going to have to tackle sooner or later. And I would rather have it be sooner than an emergency situation. And my conversation with FCS, actually we've got capital outlay, our, our CIP for what we're proposing or targeting to hit next, and obviously the rates reflect that. Mm -hmm. So I need to go back with uh, Karen and Samantha at FCS and see what could be deferred as far as infrastructure. Um, a lot of that is capacity driven reservoirs and transmission, um, the actual uh, depletion uh, of uh, existing infrastructure is difficult, but I, I think the time is right to go ahead and address that and look at the CIP to see how it can be adjusted for the least amount of impact to the ratepayers. Sure. I, there's nothing going to irritate me more than pave that thing up and stripe it up and make it look right and then start digging it up again. And, and as long and from everything that, that, that Trevor's saying is uh, if we can apply for this grant uh, loan. loan, not a grant. Low interest loan. loan. But still, it, you know, a combination of those things, the, the fact that the costs are down right now, if we don't do it now, we'll certainly pay for it when it gets expensive. And the other thing I think Trevor kind of skated over rather quickly is when you have a contractor who's using heavy equipment, excavation equipment, a substantial piece of the contract cost is what's called deployment. In other words, get the equipment here. You're going to have to get the equipment here to do the zone valves so that you could isolate anyway. So you're going to have to pay that anyway and to not take advantage of that huge chunk of money that's the deployment cost in the contract I think would be penny wise and dollar foolish so I, I, I think this is for all and all of the reasons that that's another thing is that this ends up saving a whole lot of money compared to doing it two or three years from now. RJ are you concerned at all about the 40 or you use the term 40 years, uh, how we're going to pay this back. Uh, is, is 